chat में Good evening. Uh, I hope everyone brought their Bibles. <clears throat> uh, okay. So everyone, please open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 15. Okay. Uh, so reminder chapter. The importance of reminders. Alam niyo, when I was preparing for this uh, message tonight. Kami kong naisip, no? And, and one of the things that bigla ko lang naisip is, is when was the last time you actually memorized a phone number that someone gave you? Someone who is not your family. Naalala nyo pa ba? Kasi sa akin, the last time I can remember memorizing a number and not, and not writing it down in that moment 
but yung alam niyo yun, actually memorizing was was in high school nung 90s minemorize ko yung number ng crush ko eh, hindi ko na nga matandaan yung pangalan niya pero natandaan ko pa din yung number niya at kailangan ko gawin yun kasi i don't have anything to write it on na, na dala-dala ko lagi eh, kasi yung phone ko noon was attached to the wall sa bahay no naalala niyo ba to sino pang meron nito sa bahay nila yung phone na nakataas at sa pader and and this is the way we used to do things no we, when we want to be reminded of something we either try to well try our best to remember it or write it down on a piece of paper and it made me start thinking about the way we we synchronize things these days the way we need to remind ourselves to remind ourselves no of things ang mundo natin ngayon is is submerged in gmail facebook social media at yung yung memorizing and remembering remembering things are are have become this kind of like passive activity no it's just something that we just don't do anymore if i want to send you my phone number i can just send you this this contact card that gives them all the information alam niyo my name address name of spouse blood type who to call in case i die alam niyo so they don't have to slowly write every every single detail down but not only that we live in a time where reminders are are vital to our day to day schedule tama ba we have become dependent on reminders for everything not just in work but but reminders to pay bills doctor visits and even if we don't do this now even picking up your kids from school no even anniversaries and birthdays and, and we need reminders today more than ever because we are doing so much these days and we have become so dependent on these devices to help us think through things and our lives today have become so so saturated and i think we can all agree that some simplicity in our lives would be welcome diba pero whether we we like it or not um i think reminders are always needed even on sundays even on rest days kasi di ko alam sa inyo pero ako even with reminders i still forget nakakalimot pa rin ako and then it made me think about the reminders of scripture it caused me to really go through the step by step things of of what we call the reminders of life kasi sometimes reminders are not just there to make us not forget but to reaffirm what we already know di ba a story is told of a of a couple who had marital issues they went to a marriage counselor and the wife was crying sabi na my my husband doesn't say i love you anymore to which nagprotesta naman yung lalaki sabi na ano ka ba i already said i love you on our wedding day pag nagbago isip ko sasabihin ko sa iyo ba diba? okay ba yon hindi di ba that's not the way women works i mean we all love to hear affirmations all the time from our spouse may ibang spouse nga demanding pa kailangan every two hours pinapaalala mo sa kanya. And, and I hope that you know that our God is not like the husband who doesn't care. Because God reaffirms His promise. And that's what we're gonna see tonight in, in, in our passage. When Abraham faces this moment where like many of us, we, we, he, need, he needed to be reminded of the things that God has already promised before. And it's not necessarily because we lack faith or we don't believe, eh, but we have this, this constant need to hear and be reaffirmed of the promises of God. Tama? Okay. So let's go to verse 1. Ah, I hope you can follow in your own Bibles. After these things, the word, word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision saying do not be afraid abram i am your shield your exceedingly 
great reward. So God in this moment has to remind Abram of two things to start off with. Number one, don't be afraid. Why? Because I'm your shield. And not only that, I'm your exceedingly great reward. And reading this, when we think about the concept of telling someone, don't be afraid, wag kang matakot, generally speaking, hindi naman natin sasabihin yan unless they're genuinely afraid of whatever it might be. Di ba? For parents here, we tell that to our kids all the time. Don't be afraid. It's going to be okay. Tama? So looking at this in context, why is God reminding Abram na huwag siyang matakot? Well, if you were here last week, we saw that his nephew Lot was caught in the middle of a war and was captured. And Abram, in his most ambitious and courageous moment, brought 300 plus of his servants. At sumugod sila into an ongoing war between nine kingdoms. Imagine that. And somehow managed to rescue Lot and come home safely. And now Abram's back home. If you put yourselves in his shoes, it must be such an adrenaline rush, di ba? And he is like, makita mo ba yung ginawa natin? How did we do that? Pero nung nakapag-settle down na siya at the, and the adrenaline did up, up, maybe naisip niya, oo, paano kung binalikan tayo? Kaya maybe, maybe God has now have to, to come to that place where he has to remind him, Abram, don't be afraid because I am your shield. No one's going to mess with you. And that's so, so, so important. No? Kasi alam nyo, one of Satan's biggest tacti- tactics is to, to paralyze us with fear. He uses fear as a weapon uh, that, that he will go to this that we 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 will go to this place that we will just alam niyo will just freak out and that's how he attacks us that's why the bible tells us things like perfect love casts out all fear and it's interesting because the next part of this verse will also tells us will also tell us that fear involves torment Kasi yan naman nagagawa ng fear sa atin, di ba? It torments us. Guys, you have to realize something. God did not hardwire you or me to be dependent on fear. Pero yan ang nangyayari sa atin as a culture where it, it almost becomes this, this natural thing where I cannot fully function as a person unless I'm saturated with worry and anxiety and fear. And so God tells Abram, don't be afraid. I am your shield. And again, isipin nyo, he just came from this, this heroic rescue mission and was victorious. So maybe now he's, he's doubting in his mind the ramifications of it. Baka nga balikan sila. And God is telling him, you know what? You may have this moment of fear, but remember what I told you. I'm gonna bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. I'm your shield. I'm looking out for you, Abram. Now, the second thing God has to remind Abram is not only that, but I am also your exceedingly great reward. Why is God reminding him of this? Well, again, in the previous chapter after the war where Lot was captured and rescued, one of the kings recommended that that Abram uh, receive some of the plunder. No? Pero tinanggihan niya. Sabi na, I'm not gonna take it because I don't want any man to say Abram is rich because of me. Kasi he wanted his identification to be with God. Kasi nasa isip niya, I am what I am because of God and not because of any man. Pero maybe, no? Just maybe, at this point, Abram is wondering, maybe nagkamali ako. Maybe I was wrong. Sayang eh. Maybe I should have just taken some of the plunder. You know? Malaking tulong din yun eh. Here is a king offering me a reward for my role in helping them. Siguro I, just, I should have just taken it. 
And God is right here saying, you made the right choice, Abraham. He's reminding him, you did the right thing because I am your exceedingly great reward. Again, it's not that Abram didn't know, but God is reminding him because it seems like he's starting to doubt if he did the right thing. And it's so true for us, diba? Kasi, haven't you ever been to, to church or when you read the Bible or even after here, no? After one of our sessions and you got that message or that scriptures and it's like, wow, I needed that. I needed that. And you are filled with the hope and the knowledge of whatever it is you just absorb from the scriptures. And then you go out and then you get hit in the face by, by everything around you. And it's like, I already forgot whatever it is I just read. And that's why we need reminders. Because see, I feel like, the, like Abram at this point, for whatever reason, he is anxious. And God has to remind him, hey, believe me, you, get, you made the right choice because I am your exceedingly great reward. I'm your protector. 19th century preacher, Charles Spurgeon, a man of many, many quotes, said this, God knows how to answer our need. We need when we need the shield or reward, he becomes those things for us. I don't think that any human mind can ever grasp the fullness and meaning of those four words, I am thy reward. God himself is the reward of thy people, of his faithful people. Abram had good reasons to be afraid, but he has better reasons to not be afraid because God was his shield and his protector. And more importantly, God himself is the reward. That's so beautiful, no? By the way, before we move on to the next verses, meron lang gusto kong sabihin about the topic of fear. Because I hate the feeling of fear. Because of what it does to people. Because of what it does to the people that I love. What it does to the people that I truly care about. As if fear is one of the most destructive emotions that we can manifest. It is destructive. And for some of you, it makes you feel paralyzed. Tama ba ako? And in those moments, feeling mo, you can't even do anything except to, be, to feel saturated but by whatever fear and anxiety that you're facing in that moment. And you know what? I think that's why Satan is so deliberate in using this against us. Because sometimes we are in these this moments of joy and peace and we're like, thank you, Lord. You've been so good to me. That was something happens and it, it hits us in the face and start and Satan starts whispering, Alam mo, God isn't really that good. God isn't thy reward. God, God isn't your shield. And for whatever reason, we listen to it. Fear is paralyzing. At hindi lang yun, it makes us irrational. Napansin niyo ba yun? It takes everything that you know and challenge challenges your, your logical way of thinking. Alam niyo, the, the way that you would normally process and, and suddenly you do things completely differently. Just because all of a sudden fear fuses itself inside of you and before you know it, you go, I don't even know why we're acting this way. No? The University of Wisconsin has an interesting study on the, on the study of fear. And I want to read to you a quote from it. It says, 40% of the things that we are afraid of will never happen. That we live a portion of our lives as servants to the emotion of fear over things that will never, ever happen. And I think that's why the Bible has devoted so many 
verses, so many scripture to the subject of fear because it makes us irrational. And Abraham at this moment has this feeling that is causing him to question and God says to him, don't be afraid because I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward. Okay. Now let's look at verse 2 and 3 and see how Abram responded. Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me seeing I go childless? And the heir of my house is Eli Eliezer of Damascus. Then Abram said, look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my heir. Binabasa mo to, it almost sounds like Abraham is saying, yeah, thank you, God. You have given me so much. And now you're promising to give me even more and protect me. Pero magpakatotoo tayo. Kasi what good is it? If I don't even have a descendant to give it to. Guys, remember, Abram at this point is an old man. He's in his 80s. And he's coming to God saying, that's, that's not, it's not that I'm ungrateful. I would just want to give you what you originally, I, I would just want you to give me what you originally promised to me. At sabi na that, that, the only heir in his house was someone who wasn't even biologically related to him. It was Eliezer of Damascus. Sino to? Siya yung kanang kamay niya. No? Siya yung OIC niya. It's like, yeah, he's great, but, and all, but, but he's not my son. He's not my biological son. Guys, Eliezer is a good man at makikita natin siya ulit in a few weeks. But Abram was wanting the very thing that God has promised him. Sometimes when we read the Bible and we just pass through it, parang, pero dito, I am hearing a very, very frustrated Abram. Kasi makikita mo talaga how blunt Abram is here. Because he was looking to God and being really honest and transparent. And he is saying, look, God, wala ka namang binigay na anak. Paano mangyayari itong mga sinasabi mo? And I think there's an important lesson to learn here. Ano yun? That we can have a reverence for God. We can be in awe of Him. But in spite of that, we can be transparent with Him when we pray. The beauty of a relationship is that you come as you are. And Jesus takes you and receives you just as you are. You don't have to pretend to be different. You can be just as honest as you can be. That's why the Bible has verses like, cast all your cares upon the Lord. Why? Well, because He cares for you. And sometimes casting your cares comes across like you're mad or you're questioning. But really, it's just you're just being honest and blunt. And that's the beauty of the, our relationship with God is we can ask why and how. We can let our guards down and we can speak from our hearts the heaviness that we are carrying to the Lord. Guys, it's not a sin to ask questions. In fact, how, that's how all healthy relationships work. You can ask questions, you can ask why, and you get answers. I mean, there was a time... And I know a lot of you will relate to this. There was a time when I, just, I was just about to get serious in my walk with the Lord. And I would read the Bible. At hindi ko talaga maintindihan. Alam niyo? I know a lot of you had this feeling before. You read it and you're just like, 30 minutes na ako nandito. And, and you go, I don't know what I just read. I have no idea kung ano sinasabi dito. And it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating. And I remember saying, God, the alternative to following you 
It's fun. I know it's wrong, but it's fun. But I'm saying no to that because I have faith in you. And I'm saying yes to you. But I just don't get this. So laktaw-laktaw na yung binabasa ko. I can't stay on one book long enough because wala talagang pumapasok. And then I came across this passage in James. It's this little epistle near, near the end of the Bible. And it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, ask of God, and he will give it to you. And I remember reading that and thinking, God, if you are true in saying that you will reveal yourself to those who truly seek him, I pray that I can read this word and you help me understand it. That's all I prayed. Guys, it's not like na parang naging apostle Paul ako overnight, no? It's still a work in progress until today. But I read the scriptures and it was making sense. I was reading the scriptures and God was revealing himself to me. And that's what I'm trying to help you understand, guys. You don't have to be fake when you come before God. Come as you are. Be as honest as you can with him. That you can have this reverence for God and be transparent to him at the same time. There's also this first perfect example of this in the New Testament about Jesus coming before this, this frustrated, broken-hearted father pertaining to his son who was demon-possessed. Alam niyo ba itong kwento na to? This father came up to Jesus and he says, if you can do anything, please have compassion on us and help us. And I have this mental image of this man coming to Jesus at pagod na pagod na siya because he's tried everything. Kaya he's saying, if you have compassion for us, please help us. And Jesus will tell this broken man, if you believe, all things are possible to him who believes. And I love the response of the father dito. Kasi ano sabi niya? Ito sabi niya, Lord, I believe, but help, help my unbelief. He did not give what we call the easy Christian answer. Whatever you say, Lord, I believe, I accept. No, no. He's honest and he's direct with Jesus. So he is saying, I'm going to be honest, Lord. I'm struggling with this. But I want to believe. So help me believe. And we see that with Abram right here, where God just made him this promise. I'm your exceedingly great reward. I am your shield. And Abram's going like, look, wala ka namang binigay na anak. You promised me a son. That's what I'm looking for. And here's one of the things I love about God. Because in every situation, good or bad, he meets us exactly where we are. Kasi look at what God says to Abram in verse 4. Verse 4. This one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. And there's this reminder again. Kasi nasa isip ni Abram, it's this, it's Eliezer. It, he's the heir. He's the guy who's going to carry on everything after I'm gone. Right? Even if it's not what I'm looking for, wala nang iba eh. And God in this moment is reminding him of that original promise that he gave him. And he is saying, listen, yes, I haven't given you an offspring yet. And you are thinking it is Eliezer, but really it's not him. And not only it is not him, this promise is really going to happen and it's going to come from you. The one that will come from your own body shall be your heir. It's so clear. Dito sa verse 4. 
So is God really going to fulfill this promise? Listen to this. He is, but not until 15 years after all of this, no? After this reminder. So si Abraham hindi pa niya alam, pero 15 years from now, God is going to show that his, this promise is actually going to come to pass. Pero alam niyo 15 years. I mean, we're talking Abraham being 100 years old and Sarah is going to be 90. So the odds are way, way, way against them. Kasi ang tandaan mo nila. I mean, it really takes a lot of faith. Di ba? And before you say, grabe naman si God, but ang tagal. Remember this. God is purposely perfect with His timing. So it's not a coincidence. It's not something like, alam mo yun, when you bump into someone sa labas and you say, uy, long time no see. Well, a coincidence, right? And speaking of that, it's funny kasi we always say things like that and we, we don't give God the credit for it. But with God, there's really no such thing as a coincidence. Our God has already seen everything in detail from beginning to end kasi kaya his timing is always purposely perfect. And God not only reminded him, he explained exactly what he meant when he gave the promise to Abram. Na yung heir wasn't just some kind of spiritual descendant as Eliezer was in Abram's mind, but he is going to be an actual flesh and blood heir from his own body. At hindi lang yun, let's look at verse 5. Then he brought him outside and said, look now toward the heavens and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to them, so shall your descendants be. So not only is God reminding Abram of the promise ulit, but he is expanding it with an illustration. He is saying, I'm not just giving you void and empty promises. Tara, lumabas tayo. Look up. You see the stars in the sky? So buko mo bilangin. And si Abram na imagine ko looking at the sky would go, uh, God, I don't even have an idea. I have nothing. But God is saying you have everything. Go number them, so shall your descendants be. And so there it is, the promise of a multitude. I will make you a great nation. I will, and you will have many, many descendants. God is reaffirming this promise to Abram at this point because he needs it. At minsan nakakatawa nga isipin kasi Abram right now really has no idea how important this, this promise is. Kasi para sa kanya, iniisip na his descendants are only going to benefit himself in his name. You know? But guys, his descendants are going to benefit every single person in this room. Because one of those descendants among all the stars he is looking up on right now is the bright morning star. Jesus himself, the greatest star of them all. It's going to come through this man. And he's going to come from this lineage and fulfill everything that we have read so far from the beginning. Where the serpent is going to come and strike his heel and that he's going to be stumped on the head. Crushed by the head by Jesus himself from this man's lineage. Amazing. Now let's see how Abram responded to this. Verse 6. And he believed in the Lord and he accounted to him for righteousness. Guys, Genesis 15, 6 is one of the clearest expressions in the Bible pertaining to the truth of salvation. That it is by grace through faith. Romans chapter 4, Galatians chapter 3, James chapter 2, all of these passages and basically the entire New Testament highlight what the Lord said to Abraham Dito so Genesis 15, 6. That he believed in the Lord and it was counted to him 
as righteousness. So if you are a believer in Jesus, this verse is not only vital to help you understand who Christ is, it also helps you understand the justification by faith. To be seen as if you have not seen. How is that possible? This verse. That, that freeing moment of release when you, you come before the Lord and you realize that you are not saved because of anything that you have done or what I have done. We are not saved by the good things that we do. We are not saved by following certain rituals or we're not saved by committing to organizations and churches or, or religion, whatever. We are saved, made right with God, justified just like Abraham, purely by believing and surrendering to him and his promises in faith. That Jesus being the son of God took on the weight of your sin and he proved to be God, not, by, not just by dying for you, but rising again. This verse right here centers around that fact that we are saved, made right with God purely by faith, by believing, by surrendering. So far, we have seen Jonah, Job, and Abram. And there's only one common thing between the three of them. Ano yun? All three have faith. All three, and all three were justified and declared righteous by God. Just Again, let's go back to Jesus. Naalala na yung story when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. So Jesus made his way to, is making his way to Judea and he's going to face the sisters, Mary and Martha, who will look to Jesus and say, kung nandito ka lang, my brother wouldn't have died. No? And, and Jesus in his reply made such a powerful comment. Sabi niya, I'm the resurrection and the life and he who believes in me, though he may die, shall live. And then he looked at Mary and Martha and said, do you believe this? He asked them to affirm. Do you believe that I am actually the conqueror of death, the resurrection, and the life? In the same way, guys, we are saved. We are made right with God purely by that same question. Do you believe? Believe what? Believe everything that we read in scripture, not just the parts that you agree with. Believe that he is the resurrection and the life. Believe that our justification can only come from him alone. Again, this, this thing called justification by faith is so unique because it seems so unusual para sa atin. Kasi our human minds it keeps telling us that we need to do something in order to achieve something. Tama ba? No one just, no one will give this away for free. But that's exactly what happens. We are made right with God because of what Jesus did. I mean, think about it. Nasa Genesis chapter 15 pa lang tayo. Abraham believed in God before the law of Moses was, e was even around, before the church was even established, before baptism was even a thing. He believed in God. And I hope you're, when you're reading this and you would also realize that none of us here, not even Abram, the father of faith, no one is, is good enough to accomplish this thing called perfect righteousness. So we must have God's righteousness accounted to us by doing exactly what Abram did. At ano yung ginawa niya ulit? Believe. So salvation is not about being a good boy. Salvation is not do, 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 do. Salvation is done. It is finished because Jesus paid it all. That's why this verse is so important, not just for this story, but it paved the way for the rest of the Bible and ultimately it paved the way for your eternity. Verse 7. And then he said, 
I'm the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to inherit it. Question. Bakit in the middle of the dialogue is God introducing himself again? No? In any normal conversation, it would seem questionable, maybe even weird or crazy to some people. Kasi kung nag-uusap tayo at matagal na tayo magkakilala, in the, tapos in the middle of the conversation, bigla ako sasabihin, I am Paul Marvin Ho. <laughs> Parang magiging reaction mo. Hoy, napaano ka? Okay ka lang? So why is God doing that to Abram right here? Well, because what he is doing is he is giving this self-proclamation of himself. Which by the way, guys, is seen all throughout the Bible. Parang nung kinausap niya si Job, naalala niyo? It's almost like this, this declaration of tandaan mo kung sino yung kinakausap mo. I'm the Lord your God, Abram. I'm reminding you, kasi parang nakakalimutan mo na. And I'm reminding you of who I am. And I'm faithful to my word. Okay? Pero in verse 8, tingnan nyo, Abraham said, Lord God, how shall I know that I will inherit it? Now, alam natin that Abraham will go on to, to be this big character who will eventually be called the father of faith. Tama? He becomes this picture of what faith looks like and sounds like and smells like. And yet when we're reading this, and I hope you're also wondering this, if he's going to be called the father of faith eventually, then why is he questioning everything? No? Pero, pakinggan niyo ako. What we are reading right now is not the unbelief of Abraham. We just read in chapter uh, verse six, verse six, kanina he, that he believed in God, and that's why uh, and God accounted it to him as righteousness. So Abraham believed. But that's why our topic tonight is about reminders, because see, see, Abraham, like us, needs constant reminders and affirmations. We are like the wife who needs reaffirmations every two hours, and also in fairness, sa kanya. It's already been years since God originally promised these things. Kaya it would be quite understandable for Abraham who is still waiting for this fulfillment of these promises to be somewhat anxious and concerned as to how this will all come to be. Kasi he's looking around and there are 10 different tribes and nations that are settled in the land of Canaan. And he's like, okay, I'm outnumbered. So God, paano to? How am I going to take over the land that is already occupied by all these people? So he is questioning. Like I said, we can question but still believe. Because that's how all relationships work. And that's what Abraham is doing here. He's thinking, you know, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have this baby that you promised who's going to come from my body which at this point looks more and more improbable, but I know this somehow this is going to happen. I know I can believe you, but my question is how? How is this all going to work out? Even this land that you're saying that you're going to give me, there, there's all these people living here. And that's where Abraham is coming from. He wants to know. Now, tingnan natin paano siya sinagot ni God. Verse 9. So he said to him, Bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Then he brought all this to him and cut them in two down the middle, placed each piece opposite the other, and he did not cut the birds in two. And when the vultures came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. Wow. <laughs> okay. So before we unpack all of this, tandaan niyo yung tanong ni Abram, Lord, how shall I inherit the land that you just promised me? And God's like, okay, that's a fair question. 
So what you need to do is you bring me a cow, a female goat, a ram, a turtle dove, and a pigeon. And Abram's like, okay, boss. And God's like, okay na? Meron na? Yes, yes, yes. Nandito na. Okay, great. Now what I need you to do is cut them in half. If ako si Abram, I would go, ano to? Pwede ba sabihin mo na lang sa akin how I'm gonna inherit the land? We were reading this and I hope nagtatanong din kayo, why is God asking him all of these things? Diba? And thank God it was back then but not today. And not today but back then kasi in order for contracts to be made sacrificial and binding, They would cut animals. They would actually cut animals in half. And bear with me on this. They would, they would spread their carcasses from side to side. And instead of signing a paper and a document like any normal person would do, nung time na yun, they would cut these animals and then, and then both parties would, would, whatever the agreement was, whatever was being made in that moment, both parties would walk together in between the carcasses, signifying that whatever promise made in that moment is valid and binding. If we jump to verse 18, sabi doon, on the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram. Pero a very, very literal, literal translation of this is the Lord cut a covenant with Abram. Ang wild, di ba? It's just how they do things back then. Imagine na ba kung ganun din pa din tayo hanggang ngayon? Magre, may magre-rent ng condo mo, tapos great, okay. Okay na tayo sa terms. Teka, magkatay muna tayo ng baka, ng kambing, ng ibon para maging official na. Thank God we don't have to do that today. So Abram, he had all this questions and he wanted some kind of an assurance and the lord said all right I, you want an assurance that that these reminders are true then get all these animals us. plain and simply he's saying let's make a contract right here the way you know it to be done and then we see don sadolo now verse 11 sabi The vultures came down on the carcasses that Abram drove them away. Ano ibig sabihin na ito? Why is this verse even in there? Well, kasi hindi sinabi gano'ng katagal naghintay si Abram after he prepared these things. Pero kung may mga vulture na nadumating, malamang medyo may katagalan, di ba? And Abram is driving them away malamang frustratedly and, and he's probably wondering, what's the hold up? God, ano pa to? Nasaan ka na? Patusin na natin to kasi I'm just I'm getting tired of all this waiting. And I think once again, the big thing we can learn from this is the importance of waiting on God. And I know it's such a frustrating subject. But even that has value to it, that, that waiting on the Lord is necessary in our walk with Him. And it's proven time and again to show that He is both faithful and purposely perfect with His timing. So God did not come right away in that moment. And Abraham had to fight and wait and fight off these vultures kasi ang tagal na. And God suddenly did something with this covenant in verse 12. Now, when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and behold, horror and great darkness fell upon him. And then he said to Abram, Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, and they will serve them, and they will afflict them 400 years. And also the na nation whom they serve, I will judge. Afterward, they shall come out of with great possessions. Now as for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried at, the, as a, at a good old age. But the fourth generation, they shall return here. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. So, kinagabi na. 
and God had not yet come and walked through the animal parts with Abraham. At least not in the way traditionally how they would do it back then. Instead, God put a deep sleep to fall on Abraham because Abraham in his mind, he wants this to be concrete. Sabi na, I want to know how. I want to see something from you, God. And he asked this even, even though God has already proven that he is faithful in every promise. We've seen him through his journey, through Egypt, through yung naghiwalayan sila ni Lot. But despite that, Abraham still wanted a firm reminder. And I think we can all relate to that. And God did not just provide that, but he showed him even more. He showed him the future. Because he tells him, I'll, I'll read verse 13 for you. Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs. It will serve them. And they will afflict them 400 years. Guys, alam niyo ba ano to? God is specifically telling Abraham that there will be slavery and hardship sa future ng descendants niya. At alam natin lahat to. It's the story of Moses in the book of Exodus and the slavery in Egypt. And we will see that four generations, after four generations, Abraham's descendants are finally going to make their way back to where he is standing right at this moment. The promised land. Matagal. Pero like we said earlier, sometimes that's the way God works. Remember nung sinabi niya kay Noah that the flood was going to come, did it come immediately? No. It was 120 years from when God first spoke hanggang nung, nung actual flood. 120 years. And in the same way, Abraham's descendants will have to wait hundreds of years until this promise is actually going to be fulfilled. Because God is perfect, purposely perfect with his timing. The last verses. And it came to pass when the sun went down and it was dark, that behold, there appeared a smoking oven and a burning torch that passed between those pieces. On the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham saying, to your descendants, I will give this land from the river, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates, the Kenites, the Kenesites, Kadmonites, Hittites, Perizzites, whatever. I think may electrolytes pa dyan. Anyway, it's, it's crazy to me again what we're reading right here. That there is this smoking oven and a flaming torch and, and it's representing God's presence because the scripture says no one has ever seen God at any time. Diba? And this smoke passes through these two carcasses that are laid on each side. And God does it. This ceremonial covenant, he does it, and he does it alone. Not the traditional way of their culture na, na sabay sila maglalakad. But God passed through it alone. Bakit? Two reasons. Number one, God is making an unconditional promise, meaning God was trying to make it clear that his promise wouldn't be contingent upon Abram's ability to keep his end of the bargain. No? God is going to fulfill it no matter what, kahit minsan nasisira ulo ni Abram when he went to Egypt. And reason number two, in the same way, God is going to fulfill his promise to forgive humanity to Jesus and Jesus alone. Not Jesus with a little bit of help from us. Again, our salvation is not dependent on what we can offer, but rather it's upon what Jesus offered on the cross. And again, that's why in verse 6 it says, Abraham believed and it was counted to him as righteousness. That if you are a true son or a daughter of God, that you are righteous because you are justified by faith. Because of what God's done, because of what of the grace and the free gift 
of salvation. You cannot do it yourself. That's why we cannot boast. Hindi ko pwede sabihin na, ha, I got saved so much better than you. No. We all have a commonality that is Jesus. And here God is reminding Abraham that the land that stretches beyond what he can imagine all the way to the Euphrates. Yes, it's occupied by all these people now, but God is still going to fulfill his promise that his descendants centuries from now is going to come back to this land. They're going to come back. God will prove and show that not only he is a God who makes promises, but it's within his nature that he keeps them. Guys, he is our shield. He is our shield and our exceedingly great reward. For many of us, we set our phones to have reminders in it, to, to remind us of the things that we need to do throughout the day. Pero alam niyo, maybe we need to start putting reminders in our phones pertaining to God's promises. Or, or for people who keep journals to log the events and the, the things that you go through and learn in life. Basta start, start doing it, guys. Just anything to remind you. And the reason we need to start doing it is because ang bilis natin makalimot like si Abraham. Kasi we, need, we do. We, we, we need to be reminded how God got us through probably for some of you the hardest heartaches that you've ever faced in life. And we forget about it. But if you can go back and you read it and about how God delivered you and brought you through, through whatever, no? You can come to that place of reverence again. I'm sorry, God. I, I, I forgot how you came through time and time again. Thank you for reminding me. We need reminders why God is faithful. Or like the, what the Apostle Paul would say, that we examine ourselves to see if we're in the faith. It's always appropriate. Okay? So we're done. But I just want to end with a sort of um, test, no? To examine ourselves now, like what Paul is saying. Now, I hope everyone here will participate, no? Um, see, what we will do now is I will just ask you a series of questions. And I hope everyone here will answer as honestly as you can. Sa chat lang. Okay? Pwede ba yun? Okay? Okay. Basta just answer. Question number one. How does God remind us these days? Or talk to us these days? Chat. Sige lang, answer, go. Just answer. I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to call anyone out. Don't worry. Just, just answer. Trials, blessings, mass, serenity. Nightbird, nice. Okay. Meron pa? Okay. Question number two. What is the basis of your faith? Where do you base your faith on? 
Alam niyo yan? The, the, the things that you know, the things that you believe about God. Where do you base it on? Ano yung basihan mo? Go. Bible, Bible. Sige, answer lang. Pa? Okay. Question number three. Um, to those who said Anyway, just ask the question. How will you know if what you are hearing or reading is true? Naisip niyo ba yun? To those who answered whatever you answered in, in number one and number two, how do you know if it's true? Alam ko, medyo mas mahirap sagutin to. <laughs> Faith. Yes. Kasi we all, sige, just answer, no? Pero kasi, we all listen to preachers, priests, pastors, alam niyo All these people, although they are ordained and have a calling, pero nakikita, na, nakita natin that even the father of faith, Abram, is prone to mistakes and doubts. So how will we know? Kasi even John told us, beloved, Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see where, where, whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. And that is so true. Kasi maski ako, I could easily be a false prophet if I'm, what I'm presenting to you now is not true. Naisip niyo ba yun? And here's another warning, this time from the Apostle Paul. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching but will have but have itching ears that they, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. That is so true. Guys, our human hearts have a tendency to listen only to what we want to hear and shut off the real hard truths about our condition. Yung iba sa atin, we like to do fact checks sa mga Facebook posts ng ibang tao, even if it doesn't really affect our lives, whether it's true or not. If you make an effort on that, why don't you do the same thing for the something that will affect your entire existence? And how can we do that? How can we fact check? Well, the answer is the Bible. No? So if you answer the Bible, congratulations. And that leads us to question number four. Who here regularly reads the Bible or have an active Bible reading plan? Hindi lang yung verses here and there, but like really read because you're seeking what the Lord is saying to you. Just say yes, no. Well, it's okay. Wag kang mahiya to say no. No? I'm, the, I'm not going to single anyone out. I'm, meron na ako gustong pakita sa inyo. Just answer. Okay. Sige pa.
Okay. Guys, tingnan nyo to. And I've been flashing this thing kanina pa. Does anyone know what this is? Hulaan nyo lang. Just take a wild guess. Anyone? Hulaan nyo lang. What is this? Anyone? You can unmute if you want. Kung ayaw nyo na mag-type. You know what this is? This thing that I'm showing you right now? Light spectrum, fountain, reflections, go. Sige lang. Frequency. Who said that? Ita, Ita Susan? JR. JR. Wala na? Water? With reflections? Okay. Well, if you're asking yourself kanina, eh kung sinasabi mo prone to mistakes ang tao, sino ba nagsulat ng Bible? Hindi ba tao rin? Well, I want you to look at this very closely. Because this might be the most amazing data picture you will ever see. Because what you are looking at is all 63,779 cross-references in the Bible. Ano yung cross-reference? Well, it's a part of scripture, a verse that references another verse within the Bible. Tapos yung white bars na nakikita nyo sa ibaba represent each Bible chapters from Genesis 1 to Revelations 22. Tapos yung color sa mga lines shows the reference distance to what it actually is referring to. Had the Bible been written by one person at one time, this would be amazing. Hindi lang amazing, I would say it's impossible. However, the Bible was written by 40 different authors, most of whom don't even know each other over the span of 1,500 years on three different continents. If God can supernaturally inspire these 40 authors to write down what he intended to be written down in these pages to create what you are seeing right now, kung kaya niya gawin yun, can he supernaturally open your minds and your hearts to read it and receive it and understand it? Guys, this is something you can bet your life on. The Bible is complex. It's diverse. It's intricate. It's perfect. And it has one unified message. God's love and sacrifice to redeem all who believe in Jesus. Guys, read the Bible. It's reliable. It's God's personal instruction, reminder, and love letter to you. So there is no reason not to. If you want your faith to grow, it can't just be hearing a preacher speak. It just can't. I'm just going to say it. It can't simply be joining and listening to a Bible study like this. We're just going to church. It has to be, it has to be taking this, this thing and absorbing it and not just absorbing it, but saying, God, this is hard for me to, to wrap my, my mind around what you are saying. And sometimes it's even hard to believe, but God, give me faith like a child. Guys, don't say no. God is knocking. Hindi niyo man lang sisilipin. Question number five, and it's so simple. Will you now open your Bible 
and start reading. Kasi after all of this, if you still won't open your Bibles, you, you still say, ang hirap, hindi ko maintindihan, wala akong oras, or even worse, it's not for me. I only have one thing to say. How small is your God? God is reminding you today, you cannot see what you will not look at. You cannot see what you will not look at. Today, wherever you are, whether you are a no questions asked believer, whether you are someone who picks and chooses what to believe, and even if you are a, a complete skeptic, you owe it to yourself to look at it. And to examine yourselves to see if you are in the faith. Because the truth changes everything. And the truth will set you free. Amen. Amen. Session done. Let's close with a song. From wherever you've been Come broken hearted Let rescue begin Come find your mercy Oh sinner come near Earth has no sorrow That heaven can't heal Earth has no sorrow That heaven can't heal So lay down your Sorrow.